thanks for putting the bar that high. I don't know if I can reach that. <laughs> Hopefully, yes. Uh, so my name is Ali Abul Hassan. I'm from Kuwait. Uh, I started a fintech uh, company focused on online payments. Uh, we're the first uh, company to work with banks, uh, disrupting the online medium in the country and hopefully growing in the region. Uh, you're probably wondering, why do I have a beach on the screen? I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to be surfacing about the company, but mainly about a journey of that I went through, and it kind of has a meaning to me when I started the uh, tap, basically. So this beach is actually in the Iberian Peninsula. It's in Algarve, Portugal. They have amazing beaches, by the way. Uh, that was back in 2008. Notice that corner cliff. I was sitting at the beach and I saw people basically jumping off that cliff. And I never jumped off a cliff before, but it got my attention. So I decided to go. But I didn't tell any of my friends who were with me. And basically walked up, went to the cliff, reached to that point, it was 20 meters, and I dove into the ocean. It was the first time I jumped off a cliff, and I actually dove inside, down to the head. Something I didn't realize about what I did was uh, I have a breathing problem. So when I jumped in and came out, I felt the world was spinning. Spinning and spinning, and I had to swim back to shore while it was spinning. I didn't know what was the problem, and I didn't tell any of my friends, so I had to just swim back for another 20 minutes and lay down and see what's going on. Later I found out, as you can see, that I went and checked up and the doctor told me my eardrum popped. So I had a hole and I couldn't fly. And after a week, I was basically had a trip to Barcelona. That same time, I had a doctor's appointment. So I had to cancel my flight because I can't fly. I had to figure out a way to go to Barcelona because that's my flight back to Kuwait. And uh, I had to do everything in a single day. So what did I think of? Basically, driving there. I didn't think, I didn't check the, the routes. At the time, there were no smartphones. Not that widespread yet. Uh, so we depended a lot on navigation. I rented a car with my friends. I was the one driving, doing everything for my friends. And uh, basically, we drove and decided to first go check on my appointment, then continue driving into Spain. So the first stop was, when I picked up the car, was Lisbon. This is all in one day, okay? Lisbon, early morning, waking up, taking the car, going to, down to Algarve, and if you see the map, that's where it, we went down, did the checkup at the appointment, had an early breakfast, then drove to lunch to Sevilla, stayed there for an hour, had lunch, then decided to continue driving to Marbella. I used to go a lot in the summers over there, so I said, why not just pass by over there, have dinner? And none of this was planned, okay? After that, it was around 12 midnight. We didn't have a place to stay. So we thought, why not go to Granada? So we went down to Granada, and we spent the night over there, booking everything last minute, because we wanted to see Al Hamra. We've never seen it before, so let's just do it since we're driving all the way to Barcelona. Spent the next day taking the tour, thinking everything was simple, and the afternoon, let's take the car and go to Barcelona. Later I realized from the navigation, it's eight hours away. So that was kind of a very long drive. All the other trips we had in the, that same day were just two hour trips to three hours, which was fine. 
That was kind of very long. While we were driving, we saw a plane coming down. So we thought, oh, probably there is a, an airport next to us. And again, no smartphones. So we were three. I was driving. One guy called the travel agency. Another guy was calling the car rental company to return the car. And we found a flight that was just two hours and a half away from when we were doing the booking. And we had to act really quickly. One person handled the check-in, one person returned the car, the other one uh, handled all the rest. And we flew. Again, I was not supposed to fly. Okay? <laughs> and I took the decision to take that trip after the appointment uh, that earlier that day because it was a short trip. So let me just take the risk. The risk of losing my hearing. Alhamdulillah, I'm fine, by the way. <laughs> okay? So I reached to Barcelona, alhamdulillah. And the next day, we said, I had a friend who was very much into architecture. So we went to, down to a place. I don't know if you've seen this pavilion before. Have you seen it, anyone? It's in Barcelona. No? How about this chair? Someone probably has seen this chair before, right? Well, the architect who designed this pavilion, it's called the, the German Pavilion. It was built in 1929 uh, at the Barcelona Universal Expo. And it's built by a guy, his name is Nies van der Rohe. He was born in 1886. And basically, he was widely recognized as a pioneer in modern architecture. He adopted the phrase, less is more. This got to me a little bit. Basically, this little phrase has impacted me all throughout my career and my life. And I didn't realize that only while thinking about a topic to talk about today. So at the time, I got a t-shirt from the pavilion. Not this one, I got this online, but basically I got one, I kept it at home. And why did I share this story? First of all, that day of exploration and journey of going through one city to another unplanned, it's kind of like a life cycle of a startup. Basically, you need to act really quickly. You face a problem, you solve it. You can't plan things very well, because whenever you plan, you will get another hurdle, and you need to expect the unexpected. So we had a problem, thought of a solution, explored the solution, enjoyed it, while going from one place to another, and basically taking risks, losing an eardrum, basically. So at the end of all of this, I found the less is more which was a wow moment for me. And every business, every startup that goes through a cycle, there will be always a solution that is found, and it's very much impactful for the team or that company. I applied this to myself professionally when I founded the business I am passionate about. And I'm very passionate about payments. So I've been doing it for some time but uh, decided that there was a problem that I wanted to solve. And it's that payments. That's when it started in 2013. I've been doing it right now for almost four years. So how did I apply less is more into top? It was a base thing into the DNA of the company. Our goal is to simplify online payments. It's a very simple sentence. But how do we mean by that? First, we need to understand what are the problems. So number one, understanding the market. Before you simplify anything, you need to understand what's the so problem you're solving by understanding the market, exploring the market. 
adapting to the market, build and release products for that market, and repeat. Doing this over and over and over because the market just changes every day. Technology changes, it evolves, the market evolves, and we need to change all the time. This same cycle is kind of similar to the journey I went through from Lisbon all the way to Barcelona. That's why I shared that journey. Now, being focused in the Middle East, we have 350 million people. High percentage of youth, very entrepreneurial, very promising, right? But we have a lot of problems. Lack of education and setting up online businesses, lack of technologies from existing stakeholders within this industry, dominantly Arabic, but always we forget that there are many other languages residents in the, in the region, seven different payment preferences over than that in the region. It's not only Visa and MasterCard and over 15 countries. And very important, it takes time for businesses to set up online payments. It takes weeks, months to set up. So what's the solution? Make it easy for everyone. Supporting multi multiple technologies, available in Arabic and other languages, Support, supporting commonly used payment preferences within the region, Simple to set up over 15 countries, and it takes one day to set up. That's what we mean by simple. Understanding all the problems and solving them one by one. And there, was, there is also one last problem. There's a great deal of transactions that are not being done on websites and applications. A lot of transactions are initiated during conversations, over social media, over chats. So we needed to give the ability to accept payments and collect payments while chatting with people as businesses over WhatsApp, Facebook, Viber, Telegram. So we introduced three products. GoSell, which allows you to accept payments on apps, websites, and tablets. GoCollect, which allows you to send bills and collect payments while chatting. And thirdly, for consumers, is an easier way to pay for bills as a to-do list. I'm going to show you a little bit about GoCollect, just to get a sense of one of our products. Yes, no, yes, okay, good. So this is one of our products that we've introduced. Probably you will get a sense of it, but I wanted you to get a sense visually of how we care about details, even though we're a payment company. I'll share with you another video right now that deals with uh, feedback from a reviewer. في زمن من الزمانات كان لازم يكون عندك مور علشان يصير فيه مور بس الحين صار عندك انت لس از مور كل ما قلت العمليه كل ما صارت مبسطه اكثر تعطيك انت امباورمنت اكثر عشان تخلص امور ثانيه ففي حاله اذا انت كنت بزنس اونر او انتربرنور وعندك بزنس تحتاج سولوشن من ناحيه شلون تقدر تسوي انفويسنج وبيلينج حق الكاستمرز مالتك جو كولكت راح يكون يمكن ابسط عمليه تقدر انت تسويها تطبيق مدعوم عندنا احنا بالكويت من كل البنوك تقريبا وراح تقدر تستخدمه بطريقه جدا سلسه وممتازه كل لازم تعرفه انك اوريدي تعرف تستخدم تطبيق واتساب تسوي البيلينج والانفويسنج وراح تقدر تتابع من ناحيه اذا هم شافوا المسج اذا هم حولوا لك الفلوس وش كثر ياخذ وقت عشان تتحول لك الفلوس وكل هذا تقدر انت تسويه على الماشي ما لازم تكون انت مقيد على مكتبك تليفونك ومخباتك وتخلص العمليات هذه بشكل وايد وايد سريع فالبساطه مره ثانيه شيء وايد مهم وفعلا نحن الحين بعصر less is more by the way, I heard and saw this video the first time on YouTube. 
I didn't, we didn't plan any of this, so when I heard him saying less is more, and he didn't know about that phrase, it was like right on spot. I don't know how that happened, but that's great. Shows that we're going the right direction, I guess. I'll show you one last video of some businesses talking about what we've been helping them with. Aina, ice cream, high-end ice cream. عندنا ورش يومين قبلها او يوم الحدث يصير عندهم ضرر بعد ما استخدمت جو كولكت حديت من عدم مصداقيه بعض الزباين انها ثلاث اماكن كنت انا اقدر ان اوفرها حق احد ثاني من ناحيه الاكونت كنت تعرف حتى فولو اب ويا ويا السبونسرز فولو اب ويا الكلاينتس نوفمبر 2015 بدينا ان ننزل الورش من خلال الجو كولكت هذه فكره من احراج ان نقعد ندقدق على اوادم وما نخلق فعلًا نصحنا فيها لأن أول شيء بزنس سولوشن سريع. It was a game changer. صراحة إيه أنا دائمًا أنصح ربع اللي عندهم مشاريع صغيرة إنهم يستخدمون جو كولكت آه يسهل عليهم الاكسبيرينس هو آد فاليو لتاب وآد فاليو للشركة اللي إيه تشتغل مع تاب هذا شيء واجد. ما يضيع عليهم البزنس دائمًا ضامنين إن الفلوس عندهم. Again, those videos were not planned. It was actually sharing their testimonials as they were expressed on the spot. And basically, what we've helped banks with is basically uh, helped a cash-based transaction turn into banked, which is a big population uh, within the SME market. And that's what's been how we've been helping the banking industry and disrupting the market. Thank you. <laughs>